When was the last time you took a leap of faith trusting that everything is going to work out? Do you crave growth or are you merely content with the status quo? If you want more out of your life, out of your career, and out of your relationships, you are in the right place. Take the leap and discover how to create a life by design rather than living it by default. Real success starts with you. Now here's your host, Colleen Biggs. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to another episode of Take the Leap. I am your host, Colleen Biggs, and I'm really excited for the show that we have for you today and our guest, Ron Saharan. Oh, I said it wrong again. Saharan. Is that right? Or it's close. Saharan. It's very close. Uh, well, you, you definitely get an A for effort. Saharian, like the Saharian, desert. Saharian, Saharian, yeah. like the desert. All right, Ron, we're just going to stick with Ron today and make it easy on, on everyone. But we're talking about how to make profit first in your business. You've all heard me talk a lot about generating income and uh, wealth and building your businesses, but how do we do that efficiently in taking profit first? And this is something very dear to my heart that we've implemented in our own family, in our own businesses. And I've worked with my clients on implementing this into their businesses. So today you get a glimpse of how you can implement profit first into your business so that you are profiting first and taking profit from your business and not waiting until the end to see if there's any money left over. But before we get to Ron today, I would love to thank our sponsor, Dr. Melissa Balazan. Are you in pain or are you suffering from anxiety or depression? Do you suffer from constipation? Are you being treated for chronic conditions such as high blood pressure or high cholesterol? Are you tired of taking medication after medication? Um, are you really ready to ditch the pills and discover the root cause? Well, at Dr. At Ask Dr. Melissa, she helps her clients shift from a plethora of pills to just a few truly necessary ones. Together, they peel back the band-aids and get rid of the unnecessary things that are treating the symptoms. It's time to treat the root cause. She's 50,000 hours as a clinical pharmacist, and she leverages the established benefits of Eastern and Western medicines, focusing on the true root cause of the issue and address it from the core. So you can schedule your call and consultation with her today at askdrmelissa.net. That's Ask Dr. DrMelissa.net. And we're so happy that she was able to sponsor our show today. So thank you, Dr. Melissa. Now, let's move on to our guest, Ron. And since starting Profit First Professionals in 2014, from the basement of Mike's house, and we're going to talk about who Mike is in just a minute, Ron has implemented, certified, and taught Profit First to hundreds of accounting, bookkeeping, and coaching firms throughout the globe. Whether a newer business or a 100-year-old firm, Ron has taught firm owners how to properly experience, practice, implement, monetize, and share Profit First with their customers. Ron is an expert in value pricing and has created the Profit First Value Pricing Curriculum. He lives in my hometown state of New Jersey uh, and is married. And I believe you said you're living with your daughter. Is that correct? How old yeah. is your daughter? My, no, my wife and my daughter. She's you're uh yeah, she's 11. <laughs> right, 11. Right, beautiful. Awesome. Yeah. I couldn't imagine having an 11 year old child when we have 12 grandkids and we have a 19 year old, an 18 year old, and then they drop all the way down to eight, wow. seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You know, they just kind of all go down. Uh, but yeah, I couldn't imagine having an 11 year old at home right now. So props to you, Ron, well, it, for it, that. It, it, it's it's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, she, she runs profit first in her home. I'm life. sure she does. You know, she's got her envelope. She's got her charity. She's got her Lululemon. She's got yeah. her, she's got a system. That's beautiful that we're teaching children at a young age, because that is what changes the future. If you want to make an impact, you need to be the change. We talk about this all the time. So Ron, um, many people are asking like, well, that's so great that you talk about taking a profit from the business, Colleen, but what if I can't afford to take a profit? That's the number one thing I hear is I can't afford to take money out of my business. So Ron, yeah. why don't we just dive into, you know, Mike Michalowicz, um is a gentleman that 
um, that I met through Profit First as the author of the book Profit First, which any of you that are listening to the podcast right now, I'm showing the book on the video. You can always go over to Colleen Biggs on our Facebook and be able to see the Profit First book. And we recommend that you get those. We're going to talk about more of those today. But talk to me about yours and Mike's relationship, how you got started, why Profit First and what makes it so important. I People love to hear the background of how things were built. Yeah, sure. So thank you, first off, for having me on here. Yeah. I love what you're doing and, you know, just providing me with this platform to share. Uh, so thank you. Yeah. So Mike, Mike and I, uh, we've known each other since uh, grade school. We actually grew up in the same town, went to the same grade school, went to the same high school, played on the same sports team, and even sat at the same lunch table. Um, <laughs> he's two classes ahead of me. So uh, Mike graduated, went to college. I went to college. And then we still remained friends. Uh, of course. And so we're first friends, business partner second. Mm -hmm. And over those years, Mike was starting his businesses and he would ask me to join him. And I would say, no, I took the corporate route. So Mike would took the entrepreneurial, I took the corporate and every so often Mike would be like, Hey, I want you to read my book and I want to start a company with you. Well, unfortunately the first couple of companies I turned down and, you know, just because I was doing well in the corporate world, yeah. but then I had enough, um, got a company to its all time high revenue consultants on the street and margin. And I was taught, told we were done scaling. And I'm like, uh, so I happened to just send out my emails. Hey, anybody got anything going on? Mike said, Hey, Ron, I want you to read my manuscript. I'm like, here we go again. And I'm like, yeah, sure. So I read it and I'm like, I do this. He's like, what do you mean you do this? I said, this is how I was taught. This is grandmother's envelope budgeting methodology. And you made it into it for businesses. That's brilliant. And so I said, yeah, let's do this. And over a bottle of wine, we ended up um, deciding to start Profit First Professionals to certify accounting firms, bookkeeping firms in the Profit First methodology so that they can implement this system in all of their businesses that they work with. That's beautiful. So how I met Mike was I started implementing Profit First um, into our book club. So the Leap for Ladies community that I run uh, brings in female entrepreneurs and, and women in corporate that are in business development to network together, to learn together. And what's interesting and unique about Leap for Ladies is we provide a lot of spotlights for the females to step into those spotlights, expand their branding, expand their influence to attract their customers. And we do this through um, put the podcast, the LinkedIn interviews and those types of things. And of course, you know, the links are below for anyone who would like to learn more information on that. But it, when I implemented Profit First, I did it with my clients um, before we implement it into the book club. And I brought it to them in one of our business intensive trainings that we do every quarter. And I said, uh, I, you know, I've implemented it into my business. My husband had implemented it. My daughter-in-law had implemented it into her business. Now we had always followed the Dave Ramsey, you know, kind of debt snowball using the envelope theory, but this is way different, right? This, yeah. this is a lot different. So um, that's how I met Mike Michalowicz because my clients all reached out to him because one of the first pages in the chapter of his book says, I want you to email me and tell me, you know, what I think he says, email me and tell me what your what your goals are, that you're going to do this or you're going to take step one or whatever it is. Right. That was the first yep. step to commit the commitment line. And so they all emailed him and said, our business coach, Colleen Biggs, you know, went ahead and has been implementing this. So about three weeks later, I get a package in the mail from Mike. And he sent me um, all of these amazing things and thanking me and uh, sent me his next book. And uh, and I started emailing him back and forth. And so we got on a friendly basis. And that's how I met you, Ron, uh, was through that conversation that we had. And he praises you mm. on, um, you know, he's like, you got to talk to Ron. Ron's the guy. He sets all this up. He does everything. You know, he is profit first. That's what you know, how Mike explains who you are, Ron. So tell us um, for, you know, for our listeners, when they hear you say profit first, they're like, I can't afford to take yeah. anything else out of my business. Let's, let's tell them a little bit more about what profit first is and what it means and why it's so important for anyone in their 
businesses, you know, if they're running a traditional kind of CPA way of accounting, which is what we all know. And grew yeah, up no, I, I, absolutely. And my, my, Mike's a good one. He likes yeah. to prop me up there, but he, he's the mad scientist. I just keep the plate spinning. Yeah. Um, and so here, here's the thing. Profit first is not accounting. It's not yeah. bookkeeping. It's a system a cash flow system that resides between financials, which are historical documents that happened, and forecasting, which are hopes and dreams. Profit first is the system on how you allocate your money to achieve those forecasting to make sure you don't overdo it. And so most business owners understand that they have a need for a marketing system, a hiring system, delivering their product systems, all sorts of systems, but none of them actually have a cash flow system, a cash flow system that they're going to have clarity on where they're going to know the ebbs and flows of their business, where they're going to actually be empowered. For many times, implementing profit first, it empowers the business owner because they're moving their money and they're in control of it, right? Mm -hmm. They also are experienced relief, relief. They have a system and a plan. Then they're empowered because they're moving into money. Now they can focus on their job. And so Profit first is all about flipping the equation. Everybody's been taught sales minus expenses equal profit. Mm -hmm. My graphics, right? Yeah. It pains me because we've all been taught this system. Sell, 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 manage your expenses. Whatever you have left over is the profit. Yeah. Leftover. I know. <laughs> Whatever's leftover is not important. Yeah. You don't want. If you get picked last for a kickball, you're probably not good at kickball. That's so right. what we're doing from a behavioral standpoint is telling us to measure what's important, which is sales, measure what's important expenses and whatever's left over. That's what we pay ourselves with crumbs. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. So we cross that out. Everybody, everybody cross that out. Then real formula, the round world, not the flat world, the round world is sales minus profit equal expenses. Mm -hmm. Sell, 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 take your profit, manage the business on whatever's left over. But Colleen, what people don't understand is that capital P is represented more than profit. Mm -hmm. It's represented of the business owner paying themselves. Yeah. Right. It's representative of having tax for Uncle Sam, regardless mm -hmm. of what your liabilities are. That's of right. Course, of course, there's going to be a profit, but there also should be security. Three to six months of core capital available at the home and the business mm -hmm. uh, in case a pandemic happens. Right? That's right. And also purpose. What is the purpose? What is the mission? Our mission is to eradicate entrepreneurial poverty. We say that every day. And it's because we have profit that we're able to do that. Profit is not a bad word. Bad people have a lot of money. They do bad things. But with profit, even if it's 3.5%, 3, 3 business owners can pay down debt if they have it. Right. They can celebrate the health of the company. That's right. They can hire when small businesses can hire people have jobs, when people have jobs, it relieves a lot of stress from the home life. Yeah. So yeah. when people say, I'm not even, I have no money, Ron, I can't, I, what profit, it's so far down the road. That's okay. I understand mm -hmm. that, but you can do it. You can open and, you know, implement the framework. That's right. right? You, you can start paying yourself. If you also take a look at your expenses, I guarantee you there's anywhere from three to 10% of waste in there. And what do I mean by waste? Go line by line down your P&L mm -hmm. and identify everything and say, is this necessary for the survival of the business? Yes or no? For the survival of the business. Yeah. If it's not, then you can cut it. I love that piece the most, um, you know, in getting started, because this is something we used to do back in corporate America when I worked for a company that I brought Profit First to, asked the CFO to please read the book. I was managing hundreds of CEOs at that time in a franchising company, mm -hmm. and uh, they were they were dying. Like the profit was the last thing on the line for them. And and they weren't you know, they were like, I can't feed my family. I have to work 80 hours a week in the business. And so does my husband just for us to be able to, you know, 
um, pay our employees and they still had their own families to think about. And I couldn't get them to change their mind because it's exactly what you said, Ron. They think it's an accounting system in the way you do accounting. And so a traditional CPA tries to wrap his head around or her head around how to create this traditional, you know, take that break, that traditional uh, type of accounting and create a new system. Um, but the number one thing once I left corporate America and started uh, coaching, uh, business coaching after 22 years, um, women that were female entrepreneurs, the number one thing was waste in their business. They were spending money on things that they didn't need to spend money on. And the second thing was, if you could just take 1%, we started so little. I don't care if it's you know $10 or $12, whatever it is open up these accounts and just start with these few accounts and move it over. And that, that was key. You know, my husband and I, we had tax bills every year before we started profit first. And we would always wonder where are we going to find this money from? It went on a credit card or we had to do a payment through the IRS. And as soon as we started profit first and the money was there every year, when our taxes come up, we just have the money and we pay it. It's like, oh, it's just sitting in there. Sometimes it's like, well, it drained everything we had, but that's okay because that's why the money's sitting there. And other times it's like, well, we have $4,000 left over. What are we, what are we going to do with this $4,000 extra dollars that we have um, that now, you know, we don't need because, you know, we overestimated what we thought we owed. I love overestimating. (laughs) (laughs) So one of the things, since you've been in corporate, one of the uh, tips that I I share with those that have um, shifted into entrepreneurial from corporate is I related to the 401k, right? Uh, Number one savings vehicle in America. Why? Because it's profit first. Okay. It's a behavioral system. They're taking it off the top. They're removing it from temptation and they're making it difficult to get. And if you do get it, you're going to get penalized. Well, that's what profit first is. We're taking it off the top, putting it in a bucket. And the only thing you can use that bucket for is what is labeled on that bucket. Mm-hmm. Right. And my wife and I, when we first started the 401k, we're like, eh, what, are, you know, what is this? We put in 3%. Okay. Then we started building our 401k muscle memory. Mm-hmm. We added to 15 eventually over a couple of years. So probably yeah. in this third year, we were at 15%. And that was the max at the time. And I was saying to my wife, I said, Mary, can you believe we're living the same lifestyle with literally 30% going away? What, why is that? How is that possible? How is that yeah. possible? Yeah. I didn't know that there was something out there called Parkinson's law that Mike eloquently <laughs> explains that is a theory that also Stephen Hawkins echoes that we are going to exhaust all resources that are given to us at any point of time. That's yeah. why, hey, if you right. have $10,000 in your bank account, you think you're going to spend it. Yeah. You're going to spend it. But here's the best part, Colleen, when resources are limited, when we're not flush with cash, we're more innovative. We do more. We're creative. Oh, yeah. When this pandemic first started, the innovation that was coming out of America was second to none. It was Crazy. insane. Right. Then all those um, you know loans and everything came and you've watched the innovation and <laughs> that, that just masked everybody's problem. Again, right. All right. the extra money from the government and everyone was getting fat and happy and getting paid. So then they got lazy. Yep. That's exactly what happens when you look at your bank account and you see, oh, I have twelve thousand dollars in there. And you're kind of estimating your head what you think your expenses are. You're like, oh, I'm good. But when you allocate all of that to taxes over here, what your expenses are over here, what your owner compensation is over here, you break that up. Then you look at the number and you're like, I have $2,300 in this account. I better get my butt moving. I got to sell something. That's what I love about it is it breaks it up to your responsibilities of what you have to pay anyway. It pulls it all out and puts it in the buckets of what you're responsible for. So you're not procrastinating and delaying it till later, which I've I've found the other piece is, you know, the taxes are such a big piece for my clients because they delay, delay, delay. And then they don't realize, well, you made all this money. Congratulations. Now you have to pay taxes. on Where, it. where, where is all the money? <laughs> Right. Where is it? It says here on my financials that I made a profit. Where is this profit? Right. You spent yeah. it. What do you mean I yeah. spent it? You said it's right here. <laughs> right. That's so, so true. So let's 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 dive in a little bit because I know the listeners are like, OK, well, I have a business 
and I pay all my expenses and I wait until the end. And if there's anything left over and I have a handful of clients that, that lived this way, they ran yeah. their businesses this way. It just dumbfounded me that, I, that they would even start a business that way. And, uh, and so the first thing we did was really work on what can you get rid of in your business that you don't need? What's essential? And, you know, looking at breaking up those accounts and getting started with just a very small 1% of owner profits. So what are some baby steps that, yeah. you know, that people can do to get started? Well, A, a they need to educate themselves. So we definitely, you know, need to talk about the book because that's kind of the number one step on educating yourself. I'm sure you have some more online resources oh. as well. But. Oh, absolutely. But I, I'm going to I'm going to go in a different direction. The number Let's one thing, in my opinion, is reframing uh, your outlook on Love your that. business. It is OK where you are today. What you've done today has gotten you to where you are. That's fine. We're not looking back. We're not judging. We're like, okay, maybe it hasn't been the best we wanted it to be. We realize that. Now, what are we going to do about it? Yeah. Are we going to do the same thing over and over? Or are we going to actually take a step forward and realize that it's up to us to actually do that? Right. Yeah. And so the first step is realizing. The second step is, okay, maybe I need to do something a little different. Mm -hmm. Right. Read the book profit first. And as I was sharing with you earlier, I'll, I'm going to, I am prepared to gift 10 books out to your listeners. All they have to do is email you and say, Hey, I'd love a copy of profit first. You send me their address. I'll gift it to them on your behalf. Wow. Did you guys hear that? So all you have to do is email me at info at callingbigs.net. That's info at callingbigs.net and uh, say profit first. Um, in the subject line and that you want a book and uh, send me your address and we'll get a book out to you, which is great because I'm telling you, this is a manual. This is a manual on how to be an entrepreneur with your money in your business, period. A number one. Yeah. And, and, one. and so one of the things is, is, is that, you know, start small. Like I was yeah. talking about the 401k, you're not just going to go into a gym and try to lift as much weight as you <laughs> possibly could. You yeah. know, I'd, I'd hurt myself. Right. right. And so you want to start small. You want to build that profit first muscle memory. Don't don't be overly concerned about the numbers in the book because that you're not there yet. If you're just starting, yeah. right? we're starting, we're starting and we're going to take the first step forward. First step forward is opening up ba a bank account. Okay. Most businesses have lots of bank accounts. You only can have 250,000 in one bank, you know, here in America. Mm -hmm. Well, what are all these large corporations doing? They have multiple bank accounts and they're doing other sophisticated things with their finances. Mm -hmm. So opening up several bank accounts is the number one way to go because you are going to be experiencing it. So we, we talk about the foundational five, but we're just going to talk about one. OK, and we're going to go off script a little bit here, Colleen. Sure. You know, so what is the number one pain in the business? If I were to ask uh, a business owner, hey, if your business afforded you more money, what would you do with that money? And most of the time, depending on their age, they're going to say retirement, retirement, retirement. I haven't put enough away in retirement. OK, well, then what we're going to do is we're probably going to open up a retirement account, not a 401k, but we're just going to do an account and we're going to see if we can allocate one percent into it, because if they if they're saying retirement, then they're paying themselves. OK, they're mm -hmm. living their lifestyle, but they need a, they need a little bit more juice out of that business. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to make it very important for them for the retirement. So we're going to have the retirement account in the book that would be considered owner's pay. But we're going to go off script. So if it's if it's debt, if it's taxes, you're not paying yourself, whatever that particular pain point is, let's address that. OK, mm -hmm. then let's start stacking other accounts. Right. And so the goal of profit first is to swing the pendulum. When we, you do a profit assessment, you see basically what is the percentage of money that's going out the door and the percentage that is going to your benefit. OK. And usually I see companies that it's like 85 percent out the door, 60 percent out the door. Yeah. I mean, so much is out. It's so much mm -hmm. is going out the door. Right. The job of profit first is swing that pendulum back to where most of the money is going to your benefit. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we have to start small. And if you have 85 percent going out to the expenses, you cut 5 percent. Well, that at 5 percent can go into that retirement account. 
Mm-hmm. We're playing with 100%. That's why the percentages are the best. And so anytime you cut, you can add. Anytime, you know, if, if you raise your margins, raise your margins yeah. 3%. What, what, what will a 3% margin increase do to everybody who's listening right now? That would be awesome. <laughs> By the way, uh, all of the coffee shops have raised their margins at least 3 to 5% because when I went to get a cup of coffee the other day, I was like, I don't remember paying this a couple of years ago. And now a, you know, a cup of coffee at Starbucks or wherever it is, it's so expensive. They, they're so testing expensive. pricing all across. So yeah. a lot of what the companies are doing is you're not going to necessarily see the cost. They're going to be changing their, their, their a lot of companies are on micro testing their, mm. their products, 15, 20% more, you know? So that's why you're going to see at the, like a coffee shop, you're just going to see what they are. And then they might have the, the price of the day written in talk, chalk. Right. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. you have to do it. You have to raise your rates yeah. because inflation, if you don't raise your rates, inflation is going to crush you. Can That's you imagine right. what would happen to your business if every single one of your vendors said, hey, I got to give you an inflation increase. Here's 8.5%. What would that do to your business? Yeah. If you're not raising your rates yeah. as well. Yeah, absolutely. So that's key. I'm glad that you said that. And just to break that down, he, you know, Ron is talking about just opening up one bank account and uh, putting in money, whether it be a percent, two percent, three percent, just to relieve that pain point that you have, whether it be taxes or retirement, um, owner pay, you know, whatever it is that he's saying is, uh, you know, your pain point. And uh, just as a reminder, he wants to give us 10 books for free. So you just email me at info at callingbigs.net um, and put profit first in the subject line and we'll get you a free book. Make sure you give me your address so that my team can get it over to Ron so we can get you um, get you a, a free book. That's really nice of you for doing that, Ron. Um, what would you say um, in all of the people that you've worked with? I, I would love to hear, uh, let's share a quick story, if you don't mind, of someone that you worked with that um, you know, really didn't understand profit first and started implementing it because it was a necessity or their business was going to go out of business. Tell me a good story of, of a client that you guys have worked with or has educated that um, has been able to turn their business around or just turn their, their mindset around on running a business. Because why are we running businesses? A, it provides us revenue for to live our lifestyle, right? I understand that. But are you going to sell that business in the future? Setting your business up to sell in the future, it becomes more valuable when you have these types of processes in oh, place. So. Oh, I, I love you. <laughs> you know, because you're right. Because what are people buying? Right. Yeah. You're buying processes, systems, That's right. profit. Many business owners want to use their business, the sell of it as the retirement. Unfortunately, they're not well run. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, a lot of the tax preparers out there have been hurting the growth of businesses by inflating the expenses to minimize the tax burden. That's right. That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. So if you want to generate a greater EBITDA, if you want to have a higher multiple of what your Mm -hmm. business is, well, then you need to do this. Mm -hmm. You talk to any any business valuator, they're going to... They're going to tell it's going to take three to five years to get your business in the right shape for it to be sold properly. Yeah. Start doing this now. And 70% of them won't even sell. No, 70% right. Seventy percent of them won't even sell, yeah, because they're not valued correctly. They don't have the processes in place, um, and yeah. So, tell us a quick story of yep. someone maybe that you've that you've worked with, and then of course we'll let them know how they can connect with you more on some social media platforms sure. and uh, how they can find out more about Profit First. The the success stories that have come to us through uh, from all over the globe have been tremendous, and you know, uh, Mike and I get you know, tears in our eyes when we're reading them. So, you know, some of the ones that really stand out to me is um, a a professional, uh, his son, unfortunately passed away of cancer after about um, several years of fighting over $750,000 in debt. Mm. Yeah. Paid it off because of profit first. Wow. Um, Here's another one that before, before I joined Profit first with Mike. I wanted to speak to a few people that he had successfully implemented it in. So I ended up speaking to a lady and she told me that, okay, here's the deal. It's because of profit first that I was able to keep my household together 
and keep my family together while I was pregnant and my husband left me. Mm. Yeah. Maternity account. It's crazy. Oh, crazy. Yeah. But it's because that she, she was able to have the stockpile of money that, yeah. yeah, that was devastating. And she's doing great now. She remarried, living the life. Right. Yeah. But this is true life happenings. This yeah. shit happens and it's bad. And so whether it's, you know, somebody having to send their kid to, you know, special needs school, whether mm -hmm. it's somebody who's got to pay down debt, whether it's somebody who has to send their parent to elderly care, a lot of these things, or even having enough money to buy food, right? To buy food. Yeah. Right? It, it's, it's crazy. Um, so, I mean, we've have, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of stories. Um, there's also the materialistic type of things that are good. People buying houses, people buying um, va grand vacations, people, f family trips all over, sports cars, pools, things like yeah. that. You know, yeah. that's the fun stuff. That's, that's, that's nice, but that's not what it's all about. It's right. about fiscal responsibility and having the money available that you need should something happen. Yeah. And the, the thing of this is the money is already there. That's what I've told people over and over again. The money is already there. It's not that you have to go out and this is some ploy for you to, you know, you know, do a magic trick so that it makes you go out and, you know, generate more income. The money is already there. It just comes down to how are you allocating and utilizing the money that you already have. And it's insane to me that any business owner would wait and pay themselves last because you're not worth it because it, you're worth crazy. dirt and you're the one doing the 60, 70 hours a week in the business, but you don't deserve to be paid for that. So tell me if you would go get a job tomorrow, if someone offered to hire you and said, we're not going to pay you, you need to work 60 hours a week and you're not going to get any benefits. Yeah. Would you take the job? Of course you no. wouldn't. No. But yet you'll happily run your business that way because you're an entrepreneur. And, uh, and it makes no sense to me why you wait to pay yourself. Well, you know, it's funny. I, I talk with a lot of startups in high school and college and stuff. I'm like, it ain't cool sleeping on your mom's couch when you're 30. <laughs> I don't care what they tell you. Right? Right. And, and so let's bust this doctrine of sacrifice. Yeah. The entrepreneur does not need to sacrifice. The startup does not need to sacrifice. If you are looking to be a high growth business and plow everything back into it, you could still operate in the profit first framework. That's right. You could still do it. I mean, nothing was better, Colleen, than getting up every morning and just knowing when we're building the business, hey, I just have to sell. I, you know, our first checks, very small. Yeah. But at least we had the system. Yeah. We had it. You know, even we, we our per, first profit distribution, we got, went and got coffee. Yeah. <laughs> right. Big deal. Yeah. But now <laughs> over this pandemic, we've been in a position to continually to provide quarterly profit yeah. distributions and year end profit distributions for our staff because of this system over the yeah. pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, it's so important to make mention of that. So if you want to make profit first in your business, I, I highly suggest that you connect with Ron. And Ron, what are some of those ways uh, that people can connect with you? What are some yeah, of the best LinkedIn. ways? Yeah, LinkedIn is a great place. I'm very okay. active on LinkedIn. Facebook, I'm on Facebook as well. Okay. Um, you know, the website is a great way to find. We have tons of free information in there as well. Like you look at that little hamburger thing and then click on it. I have tons of free resources in there. Okay. Um, you know, an email, email, yeah. my email. Okay, great. There. All right. So that's profit first professionals.com profit first professionals.com. Like I said, email me at info at callingbigs.net put subject line profit first in your address. We'll get you a free profit first book. This, this book right here is going to change your life, I promise you. And you're going to get to know Mike Michalowicz a little bit better, who is the author behind the book. And Ron, we're so thankful to have had you here today to join us in educating our listeners on how they can become profitable in their businesses that they feel is just sucking all of their time, all of their energy. Um, and they just feel like every month they're just generating more income and paying more bills. And we don't want them to live that way. So wow. there isn't there is a better way. And it's called Profit First, everyone. Um, and I just want to remind everybody that you're the only you that's ever been. You're the only you that will ever be. 
So how you navigate your processes in your business is up to you. Nobody's coming. No one's going to give you permission to do it one way or the other. Get in contact with a Profit First professional. Work with a Profit First bookkeeper. There's so many options out there. So you, if you even struggle with learning how to do it, you can work with a professional that does know how to do it and can assist you with your funds and with your money and with your accounts and how it works. But it is, to me, it's easy. It's simple. And then you're right. Ron, we wake up every day and then we know whether we like it or not, we're in sales and marketing. Every single one of us that own a business, we're in sales and marketing. All you have to do is just get up and sell. And you know what the processes are in the business and the distributions will always be there. I love it. So, Ron, thank you so much for joining us today. This was a wonderful show. And for all of you that joined us, thank you for being here. And until next time, be you and be strong. Bye bye for now. Bye bye. Thank you for joining us on this journey of self-discovery, where you learned the tools to create a life by design. Remember, you are the only you there is, and you are the only you that will ever be. Be you and be strong, because you are brilliant and the world needs you at your best. We cannot wait for you to join us again next time.